Okay, good afternoon, grade sevens. Um, I hope you had a very well rested youth day and that you spent the time wise with your family or relax or do whatever you needed to do and remember the day for what it was for. For today's history lesson, as you know, we're currently busy with the um, slave trade in America and most born in the southern parts of America. And we are currently busy with Unit 3, and I'm going to focus it on page 109 to 110. So for today's unit, I'm basically going to focus mainly on the slave markets, um, the injustices that happened there, as well as explain to you the concept of a triangular trade route um, between the continents and what was traded between those. Um, but before we start, let me just get everything set up here. Darshai. So, okay, here's the memorandum for last week's activities. For activity 2.3, was very straightforward. I know from some of the classrooms, there was a bit of clarity needed. So whenever I speak or I mention the word indentured laborer, it's the same as meaning contracted uh, worker or contracted uh, um, laborer. Um, you could have also, I think the, the textbook refers to the term indentured servant, but they all have got the same meaning. But please do not, um, how can I say, confuse that with the term slave. So you can look there on the board. It's very straightforward, very short activity 2.3. You can ask your teacher to pause here. Then for the next activity um, was a mind map. Um, if your teacher was very kind enough, he or she would have put up that one slide where I wrote the slave ships with a few bullet, uh, bullet points. And you could have literally copied that down, but it's also in your textbook. Remember, whatever I put on the PowerPoints is essentially just a summary of what's in your spot on textbook. So your mind maps there, you're welcome to add pictures or drawings if you wished. Um, but just those, please, you can ask your teacher to pause here as well. Then I'm just going to move the screen a little bit. Then going on to today's work, we're going to focus on the injustice against slaves at slave markets. So as we spoke about the slaves being transported across and uh, um, how they were held in the forts and then sent along the slave ships, and then they were basically sold at markets as you would with goods or services. So just think about this, we're basically comparing a person to something we'd put in a shopping bag and that alone is an injustice and cruelty. So if you just look at these points, slaves with such skills as a builder, carpenter, uh, plantation or cook, sorry, plantation worker or cook, or those that could read and write were sold very well because obviously they were skilled workers. Um, cruelty of auction, selling family members uh, to different buyers, sorry on PowerPoint sometimes it splits your words a bit, so I apologize for that, um, could never see each other again. So what I mean by this is, is that, so if there was a family, let's say five family members, let's say a mother, father, and three ch um, children, um, there were slaves who were sold, they weren't necessarily sold together or to the same plantation owner. So their families would split and they didn't really take in consideration who, was, who were family members and who were not. There were rare cases where plantation owners would buy a whole family, but that was very rare, essentially. And then even small children were separated from their mothers. So you can just think of the emotional ordeal that those children had to um, undergo, as well as slaves were never allowed to visit each other. Remember, at the end of the day, these slaves did not have their right to free movement or such. You know, they were seen as their owners property, if you will. So there's just a few images. They're also in your textbook, especially the one on the left. Um, you, I don't know if your teacher can screenshot his or her screen, but on the left, it is in your textbook as well, is an example of an advert of a slave market. And then the next slide, if my computer will allow me. Yes, the triangular slave route. So I just want to go into depth of this and I'll, I think my cursor is on the screen now. So we are working here with North America, Europe, and then Western part of Africa. So let's start at North America. So obviously we know that, the, that Britain had colonies in North America at this time and as well as West Africa. 
So North America had the plantations and because Europe required the raw materials from these plantations, a trade route was needed. And that's where these three legs come from. So from North America, right, where there was sugar, tobacco and cotton, because I think the plantations were there, raw materials from the colonies to Europe. So these were sent to there like they wanted. I've mentioned this before. In return, Europe would then export manufactured goods. So they're taking the raw, they will uh, uh, um, manufacture it or uh, produce it further. In Afrikaans, we speak of verwerk. Um, they'll change the product and then export that to West Africa. And I'll get back to that now. now. Then from West Africa, where the slave coast was, they exported to America the, the manufactured goods and the slaves. So think of it as being like a, like a, a, as horrible as it might sound, a long drive where you pick up a few goods and then you go to your final destination. So essentially they made an agreement of saying, well, North America will give Europe their raw materials, but in return, they want slaves and these raw materials to be processed as manufactured goods. They could do this by then exporting the manufactured goods to West Africa, getting slaves and then sending those slaves back to North America to work on plantations. And this eventually turned into a cycle. Then um, what happened to the raw materials the slaves produced? Because as you see earlier, one of the legs, the manufactured goods went from Europe to West Africa and then again from West Africa to North America. Right, let me just move our screen again so I can see here. European forces took slaves from Africa and from the Caribbean to um, America. Raw agricultural products from the plantations where the slaves worked were then transported to Europe. European countries then took the goods made from raw agricultural products back to the American colonies. On the way back to America, some of these goods were once again exchanged for um, African slaves. So at the end of the day, it's, it's like a slap in the face. These slaves are working tirelessly in cruel conditions on products that get sold back to them at quadruple the price that they cannot afford because they're not getting money for their work. So that in itself is an injustice. So let's just look there in the orange block. This system is called the triangular trade system. Each one of above was a leg of triangular trade. The slave trade was just one leg of a larger economic triangle. Then uh, the products and raw materials were produced as follow. So obviously things like cotton, tobacco, sugarcane and such had to be processed into products that were more commonly used. So cotton obviously went into fabrics and fabrics obviously would then go into garments, clothing, linen, anything, any of the such. Sugarcane is processed into smaller sugar granules for tea and food. Um, molasses, if you think of molasses, it's almost like a very, very thick syrup. Um, it's a dark brown syrup that remains after sugar is made. Molasses used to make alcoholic beverages. And then the tobacco leaves were made for cigarettes and snuff. Remember, snuff is a form of tobacco that is essentially snorted up the nose, right. Then did slaves get in any of these products? And this is where the injustice comes in I spoke of earlier. They worked very hard in the fields from sunrise to sunset six days a week to produce goods. Raw materials exported to England um, to be used in manufacturing products. They received very little or none of these products for their hard work didn't have the money to buy any of the products that came back to England. Because think about it, despite them working these harsh conditions and labor intensive work and cruel hours, they're not getting any remuneration. In other words, not any money or pay for um, their work. So like I said, it's a slap in the face. You know, they're the ones getting all the tobacco, all the sugarcane, all the cotton, but not getting to use any of the products made from those items. Slaves were not proud of their work because they did not receive anything for them um, or for it rather, no matter how hard they worked. So again, it's, it's, you wouldn't take pride in your work if you don't get reimbursed for what you're doing. And then just there on the right hand side, um, just most probably a plantation owner whipping one of his um, slaves. 
Um, slaves could have been whipped for not working properly, for misconduct or misbehavior um, and such. And at the bottom, slaves worked hard. If they worked hard, they did not get products or money. And in today's world, oh, sorry, in today's world, we are so, um, how can I say, rigged up to think it will, if we work harder and we achieve more, we'll get more. And that's, that's how it should be. You know, you, what you put in is what you get out. But in these days, it was not the case. Then just for today's activity, there's two activities, activity 2.5 as well as 2.6. Um, for both of these, you first need to read through page 109 to 110 in your textbook. At the top of a new page, it's 2020-06-17. The first activity is slave auctions um, or slave markets. It's uh, It refers to activity on page 109, but you'll see in the topped version that I uh, put in the worksheets for those learners at home or for those at the schools, the ones I gave your teacher to hand you. Um, some of the questions might be different, so please refer to the worksheet one and not the one in your textbook. Paste in and complete for me once you've done that. On the following page, just please note, um, had a bit of a weekend and rested and ch forgot to change a 10 to a 17, so please do that for me. Then there's activity 2.6, the slave trading, which this refers to the triangular um, trade that I spoke of between the three continents. Paste in the activity and complete. In the activity, you'll see there's a table. I ask you kindly to recopy that table and fill in. You know, at table view, we don't just fill in tables on the given worksheets that you are given. Right. I wish you guys, oh, wait, before I do that, let me just, there we go. I wish you guys all of the best. Stay warm, stay safe. And the media and the world's your oyster. So, Use this time with your parents' um, guidance and supervision, please, to avail yourself to more resources out there because your textbook is rather limited with visuals regarding this topic. Um, at the pace we are currently working at, I am looking to doing more um, videos and images towards the revision time of this term. Um, but for now, we're just trying to get through the content of the work just so you can get the basics down. And then when we go through the videos, we'll do more source-based questions as well. So that's at least something to look forward to. But I wish you guys all the best and keep well.